Hi friends, my name is Christy Wolf and I am here with Tina again. We had a conversation before she started doing a digital story and Tina has come back to talk to us about what that whole process of doing a digital story uh, was like. And so thank you so much for being here, Tina. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So let's jump right in. Absolutely. How are you feeling after going through the process of digital storytelling? It's kind of a mixed bag again. I kind of, I feel there's relief that I've kind of come through the process to the other side. We have a completed, you know, story. That was always the worry. We were not going to get this done, but yeah. So there's relief in coming through the process, having something completed, having worked through it. And then there's also that, you know, exposed feeling again, just sort of my story's out there and it's visual and it's tangible and um, I get to share it. And with that comes its own, you know, feelings. So relief, but also that exposed vulnerable feeling as well. Yeah. And so just to remind people, often when I am co-creating a digital story with an individual, that is their story to use as they choose. So it may never go beyond their, themselves. It may never go beyond their family. Um, whereas with Tina, because we, I wanted this experience of knowing how she felt about it um, and testing out digital storytelling with somebody who is a counselor as well, um, she knows that her story is going to be public. So that definitely puts a different spin on it. And when people are creating their own story, they may have in their mind, like, oh yeah, for sure, I'm going to share this. And down the road, they might not want to. Mm -hmm. Same, they might think, oh, this is just for me. This is just for my family. This is just a record of time. Um, and then they may choose down the road to, to share it. So one of the things that I've talked about with Tina and with the storytellers that I work with is that idea of storyteller well-being. So making sure that you're going into telling a digital story with that you're not in trauma right then that um, you have some supports in place for if you need to debrief after a session or you have somebody that you can talk to. But one of the other things, and Tina, I don't know how much we've talked about this, is that this story is your own. And mm -hmm. so if at any point you're like, you know what, that's enough. We've, we've, for us, we've done this for like six months. I would like my story to be taken down. That is at your own discretion. So that idea that it's continual consent. So right now, Tina has provided me consent to use her story and share her story when I'm teaching, um, but that at any point she is able to say, okay, I'm good. Things have changed. I don't want this story to be out there anymore. So I just wanted to bring that up too, because even though we've made a side deal of getting to talk about your story, that is still true for you. And so that's something that I want you to be aware of. But I found with every storyteller, even if they knew all along it was going to be public, it's a nervous feeling when you put yourself out there like that. It is, it is absolutely, you nailed it. It is a nervous feeling that your story is not inside of you, but it's now outside of you. And I think, um, and it's reflected back at you yeah. <laughs> as yeah. you watch it and process it and grow with it. So yeah, definitely. So can you describe your digital stories? Because people likely won't have seen it. We're not totally sure how we're going to use it yet, if it'll just be more for workshops or if it's more public. So yeah, tell us about your story. About my, um, so I think that, I mean, the theme of the story is grief and loss. And I think um, that that is definitely presence about love. It's about companionship, um, but it's about losing um, someone close to me in this story. Um, it's the loss of my pet of my dog, Benji. Um, and I think, uh, as I went through the process and I wasn't sure if I was going to share, you know, it's the loss of my dog or just focus on loss. Um, but as I dove deeper into pet loss, I realized I was unpacking a lot of stigma so I think it's also about the stigma of pet loss, maybe a, a loss experience that people don't really talk about, um, which I feel um, is important to kind of normalize and to talk about. And so it's about pet loss and, and the process of that. And then it's also, I think, about connecting with nature. So my journey connecting with nature, with the natural world, with animals and and all that surround me in order to help me through my journey of healing through the loss, of living through that loss. 
Um, so I think it's got all these elements I didn't really expect it to have, which is kind of exciting, <laughs> um, well, and, but also made it more meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a lot of conversations about whether you include Benji, whether yeah. it's more right. of a story that is about loss, where the viewer doesn't know who the loss was and whether it yeah. becomes more like that. But why did you choose to include Benji? I think it was part of my journey of, of being okay with, with that part of the story, which felt very embarrassing for me. Um, it felt like I couldn't really be public about that loss because it was a pet and it wasn't a person. And I, I think that through the process of telling my story, I became more comfortable with, with that reality, that, that truth, which was my truth, yeah. that my loss, um, the significant loss in my life was the loss of, of my dog Benji and that that was okay to say out loud and that actually there's value in saying it because yeah. maybe there's other people out there who also feel you know the loss of their companion or pet was a significant profound loss that that really changed my life changed the course of my life and how it would go and so I think to not include it felt a little bit like I wasn't being true to the story yeah. and also wasn't really paying respect to that relationship, which was so meaningful to me. And so, yes. but that was a really emotional and difficult part of my journey was, yeah. was coming to my truth about that was revealing that piece of it worrying about what people would think really <laughs> well and I really appreciate this because as a grief counselor you like everything you said you'd be like I know that this is not a problem and then you would like but it's hard and so exactly. that was yeah. really helpful and I also want to tell you that I have a friend who uh they had to put their dog down last week and I was telling her about your story and so if you're comfortable I would like to share it with her um, absolutely because this is a hundred percent what we are talking about that fact that there are other people that need to hear this story. Um, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, even, you know, working through grief in, in, as a counselor, um, I know that loss is, is significant in whatever form it, it comes from or, or if, you know, but again, when it's your personal story, then you, you have all those questions about, you know, is this normal? Should I be having this kind of reaction? You know, do other people have this kind of experience too? Is it just me? The, all those kind of feelings, right? And and I think I talk about it in the personal story that the shame and embarrassment was very present. Thinking about the process of creating a digital story, thinking about the product as well, what was easy for you? Um, I think I, I was sort of pondering this idea of like what was challenging what was easy I don't think easy would be the word I would even use for this process because I don't think I think if you really dive into it I don't think any part is really easy what might have been lighter I think um was the the sharing of the joyful memories right yeah. the sharing of the positive it was easy to talk about my love for benji it was easy to share photos of him and and even the you know nature uh photography so the hopeful message was a lot lighter right and kind of i could sink into that and that was uplifting and it and it was joyful and it was meaningful and so I think the lighter part of the process was definitely feeling that love, that, that companionship part of the story, the, the lighter emotions of the story. Yeah. Um, and the resilience piece for you. And the resilience. I think. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You can absolutely coming out the other, you know, coming through the grief to a, a, a bit of a lighter time in your life or finding hope through that yeah. grief. That was a bit lighter. Um, and, and I guess easier, um, to, you know, to use that word as well to, to uh, find images to write the, the narrative, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what was challenging? We've talked a little bit about that already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess the challenging would be the opposite of that, right? The harder emotional parts, um, when I really wanted to feel the grief and loss again, in order to 
find the words, find the images that would reflect those feelings. So I think the hardest part, I mean, the hardest part for me overall was being vulnerable in that way. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I typically naturally do is share that vulnerability. And, but, but I remember in the beginning, it was one of the things that I wanted to really experience. Yeah, <laughs> it was why I wanted to do this myself. So, um, so I think that was the most challenging, but also the most rewarding part of um, of the journey was that vulnerability. The darker places that you know um, that aren't gone um, because with grief it doesn't go away. You just incorporate it in a way that you can sort of feel okay to move forward, I guess, and find. Uh, uh, a different, a new normal, I guess. Yeah. No, um, I absolutely get that. Yeah. I don't know how much you, you know about what's going on in our lives right now, but uh, we lost my father-in-law last week and I bring it up because we had done a digital story. He and I had done a digital story together of him reflecting back on like their family business and we completed it in the fall and it just went out um, publicly kind of a week before he died. And to have that, um, his voice telling the story and like, and the experience of us working together on it um, and pulling pictures from the family history is just like a gift that I am so grateful for because that's, it is that thing. You've done a story after you lost someone you cared about. And I had done it before. And just like the differences in how you process those, those things. And I wonder if I will end up doing a digital story about him after the fact, like, but just keeping that in my mind that once you know how to do a digital story, Tina, you could walk away right now and you could make another one. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I do think that that was a little bit challenge, a challenge of the process as well is that I kept, you know, kind of saying, okay, this is my story in the moment that I wrote it, yeah. which was early in the process, but that story is always evolving. It's yeah. always transforming and always changing. And I think, you know, I, I kept catching myself saying, but will this be the story in the future? Yeah. You know, where will this story fit? Is it changing even now while I'm doing this process? Am I yeah. changing it? Right. And, and I was, I was changing um, the narrative as I was even telling the story, it was evolving for me. So I, well, think I've done three personal stories yeah. and each one is very similar on the topic and it is just like where I'm at now. So okay. I, I completely agree with you. And I have like lists of stories that I still want to do. Like when I have a story idea, sometimes I'll write the entire story and I just put it aside for another time. Uh, sometimes it'll just be some thoughts on it, but like I have a folder going of just the next stories that I want to tell. And it's always kind of in the back of my mind of like, what can I do now with this? Absolutely. Yeah. So would you point. recommend this to somebody else? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I would. I think just in so many levels, I mean, whether you, sh you know, publicly share it or not, isn't yeah. even part of the journey. The, the journey is really the honesty that you get to with yourself. I mean, it is very self-reflective. It is a very vulnerable place to be, but in a very transformative way. So I think absolutely, I would, I would recommend anybody going through the process of creating a digital story at whatever moment in life that that seems to make sense for you. Um, uh, it, it just is, a, and I knew it was going to be a powerful emotive medium to do it, but I didn't realize how powerful really yeah. until I was in it, experiencing it. And I think, you know, it brought up a lot of grief and, and a lot of feelings that uh, were still there to the surface, but in a good way, it, it made me sort of reflect on things that, that I was ready to, to look at in a different way and to express in a different way. And yeah. Um, and that's transformative. That's healing. So absolutely. Well, and one of the reasons that I asked you to do this, like when we started talking about it, I was like, oh, I'd love to get your opinion because I do want to do workshops down the road, but I also recognize that I am not a counselor and that there might be times that I would prefer to have somebody who has the experience of doing a digital story, but also can support people. And so knowing that Tina now has that experience and I can touch base with her and see if that makes sense is something that I do want to be able to offer because that storyteller well-being piece is really important to me and the recognition that there were times where things were going on in your life and we 
said, okay, we're going to not meet this week. We'll meet another time. Um, so depending on the way it's done, like, uh, we could spread it out or, or condense it to get people through it faster. So just the leeway that there is with creating a, a story just with one other person, a workshop would definitely be a bit different, but yeah. I'm really interested to see how a workshop goes. I'm doing the training in March and I'm so excited because you've got just that many more people that are listening to the story and offering kind of like feedback. Um, I, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to that sharing side of, of the workshop piece. Absolutely. And I think it was really, really valuable to have your support and encouragement. And the times when I came back and I was sort of stuck or things took longer than I had hoped that they'd take, you, you kind of really normalized that experience for me. Like, it's okay to feel you know, like I just couldn't look at it this week and that's part of the process, yep. but, you know, and I, and I think to have somebody, you know, walk you through that, um, normalize that experience, validate the feelings. This isn't an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, there's, there's uh, a meaningful pace that you naturally have. I think that is, is helpful to honor that however long kind of it takes. So yeah, group format may be a little bit different because you might have to condense, condense it, but then you also have a lot more support around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like people will gravitate towards each other and find, Absolutely. and that connection piece, like Mike Lang um, from Common Language Digital Storytelling, he's who it has trained me to be a facilitator. And he often talks about like his favorite part being the, the conversations that come out of it yeah. during the process, but actually that idea of, screening a story and talking about it and sharing it and and seeing what resonates with other people is a huge part of that so that made me just think Tina that we maybe need to have a screening of your story but we'll talk about that after the okay. fact and see, and see what we think so sure. <laughs> how have you shared your story have you shared your story with anybody yet uh, well, I've shared it with my partner, um, who was really, really helpful because it kind of helped me, you know, open that wound a little bit publicly, um, and walk through that, but I haven't shared it outside of that. Okay. Um, I do intend to share it yep. outside of that, but that was sort of my safety zone. So <laughs> yep. nope, that's a hundred percent. And you, you were yeah. sharing it with him regularly throughout the process. I was, so you were getting feedback at the same time, which I think was a, a really awesome way to do it. And I, and I think that that would happen with, with a group, you know, cohesive yeah. kind of group um, experience. Um, or, you know, if you were doing it a one-on-one, -on -one, that's certainly something that I did with you as well, but to have somebody, you know, sometimes when you're going through your emotional story, you're kind of trying to find objectivity, but you're really subjective and immersed yeah. in it. So it's yeah. nice to have somebody just bring you out to some of the, you know, practical stuff and be yeah. like, you know, I really like how that goes or the timing of that really, yeah. you know, needs to change or, um, or even why did you choose that image? And then it really gets you to think about why yeah. did I choose that image? <laughs> yep. No, a hundred percent. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that was helpful to the process as well. Okay. So now that the story's done. Yeah. How are you feeling? We usually do like a one or two word check-in at the end of each session. So this is our one or two word check-in. How are you feeling now that the story is completed? I know. I think, I think relief. Yeah. And, um, you know, anticipation. <laughs> oh, I like that <laughs> one, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Relief and anticipation of what comes next. Well, Tina, thank you so much.